Have you ever heard the phrase commit early and commit often when it comes to Git? Well in general that's very good advice, but it does mean you'll end up creating commits at places in your development that aren't really natural stopping points. So maybe you've committed when the code wasn't building or the unit tests were failing or something like that. Squashing those commits into one can make it a lot easier to understand the work you've done when it comes to reviewing or rebasing or merging it later on you'll thank yourself. <laughs> Okay, we're going to squash some commits in Git. So here's what you'll need. A bunch of Git commits and a text editor that you're comfortable with. The default text editor in Git is Vim. Vim is what we in Britain would call a Marmite text editor. Marmite is this dark multi paste we've got here that some people love it, some people hate it. It's polarizing, basically. And so is Vim. If you want to use a Visual Studio code or something, then run this command first. But all right, squashing. Here we have some commits going into our local repository. Each commit has a new ID and a message, and each time we add a new commit, the branch marker gets updated to follow along. The branch marker in this case is main because we have the main branch checked out. Now squashing is where we take a bunch of commits and replay them all on top of each other to create a new commit that contains all the changes of these three commits here. Remember, and I say this time and time again on this channel, commits are immutable. Squashing it doesn't destroy anything in your Git object database. It just creates a new commit that includes all of the changes of these commits that you've squashed. Then, when you've got a new commit, you can see it has a new hash here too. When you have a new commit, then Git will move the branch head over to that new commit, which will replace it in the graph where the squashed commits once were. Those squash commits will eventually be garbage collected. They are what Git calls unreachable commits. A quick side note here, you can actually view all of the unreachable commits in your local repository by running this command on the screen here, git fsk unreachable. Just like reflog, which I cover in another video here, this is another way to find the commits if things go really badly wrong for you, which can sometimes happen when you're doing a squash, especially if you're squashing a lot of commits in one go. So let's squash some commits. And after all this preamble, it's actually not that complicated at all. So like usual, create a directory and run git init in that directory. Now we're gonna create the first few commits. This is the same as a lot of these git exercises on my channel, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on what this does, but basically I'm adding some text to a file, staging it, and then committing it a few times over. Okay, great, we have four commits here in a nice line on top of each other. Next, we're gonna start squashing. Now, squashing is not actually a command in Git. There's no Git squash. It's just part of the interactive rebase feature. You can start an interactive rebase in Git by doing git rebase-i and then head with a tilde and the number of commits backwards that you want to start rebasing from. So I'm gonna do head tilde three to start rebasing on the last three commits. As you can see, git rebase enters interactive mode where it asks me to change a special file with my text editor. What we need to do in this file is change the text from pick to squash for all the commits that we want to squash, except for the first one. Save that, and we get a second file. And this is where we set the commit message for our new squashed commit. Remember, this is a process of creating a new commit and then replacing it in the history. So this is the commit message that everyone will see when they look at the git commit history. I'm gonna add in a new message at the top, leave these other messages uncommented too, so we still have that information in our squash commit. You could comment those out too if you like, it's up to you. Let's save that file too and take a look at our git log. Here you can see the top three commits have gone and in their place is our nice big squashed commit. We can do a git show on that hash and you can see here that the full message, including the previous commit messages that we left in, are in there. Also, if you take a look at the changes this commit is trying to make to our working tree, it adds all three lines of text to this file. If you remember, the commits we created in this repository were adding a line of text each. So this commit is doing all of those three separate commits jobs just in one go. Okay, so let's have another go. So I'm going to undo this squash. Now, how do we undo things in Git? Well, we just need to find the commit hash of the last commit that we squashed and then reset our branch back to that. There's a link to my video here about recovering lost git commits if you need help with using the ref log. 
So now we're going to run this rebase again, but this time I'm going to introduce you to a new label which is Fix Up. Fix Up is the same as Squash, except it automatically takes the message from the first commit, so we don't get that second step asking us to enter the commit message. So have a play around with this. The commands I run to do all this are in the description, but definitely have a play around in a local directory yourself until you get familiar with squashing and the ways you can do it. So that's squashing. There's one last thing I wanted to touch on though. You probably noticed that we do squashing through the git rebase command. Well, why is that, right? We're squashing, not rebasing, okay? Well, actually, no, we are rebasing. If you watch my video on Git rebasing, you'll know that rebasing is a process of taking some existing commits and replaying them on top of another base. Rebasing, right? Well, that's exactly what we're doing here, except the other base is just on the same branch we have checked out. So instead of creating new commits, Git will bunch all of those changes up into one big commit. Um, but the rest of the process is the same as a normal rebase, and it replaces it in the tree just like a rebase does. All right, that was Squashing and Git. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips on software development, career advice, interview tips, all sorts of stuff on my channel name and find out.